Hello, everybody. You're listening to KPS Stories Podcast. This is our very first episode. I'm your host, Steve. And I'm your co-host, Kayla. It's a couple days before Halloween, so we decided it would be the perfect time to introduce the very first episode of this podcast. This podcast is a production of the Keystone Paranormal Society. If you're interested in the Keystone Paranormal lore, then this is for you. Let's start off with the haunting of Harris Hall. We have a call-in from David F. from Tunkhannock. Hi, so I was watching TV the other day, and like, this commercial came on for Keystone, and there's this big brick building up on top of a hill. Like, I was just wondering if that was haunted. Oh, I'm happy you asked, David F. from Tunkhannock. <laughs> so, Harris Hall is the oldest building on campus was built in 1870, when Keystone was a dream in the hearts of those bold enough to try to bring a quality college education to Northeast Pennsylvania. So, according to the legends of Harris, and there are quite a few of them, originally it was an academy for soldiers, veterans from the Civil War. And for a lot of years, it was just that. It was the Keystone Academy. And then, as it started to gain traction, as more people were coming, it was becoming recognized. And, you know, famous people like Chrissy Mathewson came through here, stuff like that, became Keystone Junior College. So they began to expand. They started building other buildings including one that you'll only find in old pictures of the college called Moore Hall. And if you look at old maps, you can find them in kind of like the dark corners of campus if you look around a little bit. Moore was right next to Harris, um, at a right angle from it. It looked like an L. Okay. So the story went that there was a resident director, an RA, something like that, whatever the 1920s equivalent of that was, who worked in Moore because it was an all-gentleman's dorm. And he did some pretty heinous things, according to the legend. Um, Some things that we can't describe um, with our TV-14 rating. We can allude. (laughs) Yes. So he had some questionable things that he did, you know, some sexually inappropriate activity occurred in this building. And finally, after a long time, somebody spoke out. Somebody got the college involved, and they were going to remove this guy from his position, predictably. Well, they called the cops. Police are on the way to escort him out, to escort him to jail. And according to the legend, they found him hanging from a rope in the attic of Moore Hall. How true do you believe this to be? One of the things that we're going to talk about a lot on this show is that the legends of Keystone probably have some kernel of truth, but they get greatly embellished over the year. As most do. So I just remember even when something will happen on campus, like, it'll be something simple like, A person threw a rock at somebody's window one night. And within two days, it turns out that they shot the window with a gun. Like, it just... It spirals really fast. So, as far as the the RA that was abusing the residents, I'm sure that those things happen. But the chilling part of the story, as you've all predicted by now, is that his ghost haunts the campus. And he's said to be a man wearing all gray that just kind of stands off to the side and beckons to people as they pass by him. Now, what is interesting to note is that they tore down Moore Hall around the turn of the century, and it's no longer there. Um, You could see the foundation stones, but that's really it. It's a veteran's memorial garden now. That's kind of a spot no one ever goes. So that's the first one. Now, as for Harris Hall itself, there's another very common one that I've heard several versions of. And once again, how true it is, that's up to the listener to decide. So that story goes that when Harris was still the only real building on the campus, there was a professor here who was gay. 
and because it's like the 1930s, 1940s, whatever, he was ostracized by his peers, and he was constantly being bullied and made fun of, and, you know, all sorts of things like that. So the story goes that one day he opened the window on the fourth floor of Harris and jumped out and fell to his death. And the, the famous ghost story of Harris is that if you're there late enough at night when the moon is just right and the wind starts to howl, you can see him reenact this fall from that building over and over again. Now, you worked in campus safety, right? Correct. I worked in campus safety for three years. Did you ever experience anything yourself in Harris Hall? So, I never saw the gray man. I don't know if that's a thing. I never saw the guy reenacting his death. Um, That one might be real just because they do have iron bars over all the windows on the top floors. That seems kind of like a reactive thing they did rather than something that was in the building plan, so maybe that one's true. But when I was in the department, there were a couple of interesting or bizarre things that happened in there over those few years. So I guess I'll just start with the first one. It was fall of 2016. And my coworker, Dale, who was only with the department for, I don't know, maybe three or four months, wasn't long. He was going to Harris to lock down the building the one night. And he called us all on the radio, and he was freaking out. And he was a laid-back guy. He has seven kids, so he kind of has to, you know, he's good at balancing stress and managing a lot of stuff that comes his way. But he was freaking out. He's like, Steve, I need you to come over here right now. Like, you, you got to get over to Harris. You got to get here. Okay. So I get my other coworker, Jared, and we go up there, and Dale's like, he's freaking out, like, There's tears coming out of his eyes. He's huffing and puffing. His eyes are wide. I'm like, what the hell's going on? He says, I was going up to the third floor, and when I got to the door, the door wouldn't open. So I unlocked it, and it still wouldn't open. So I'm trying to open this door, but something is holding it back. And then all of a sudden, I just heard a dog barking. And then I couldn't open the door, and I heard something like running down the hallway. And then 30 seconds later, I tried to open the door, and it opened right up, and there was nothing there. Now, that kind of thing is hearsay, you know. But just from how freaked out he was, I absolutely believe him. believe everything he said. So, a little bit later on, it's Jared and our other coworker Jordan now. Both of these guys are skeptics. I should say this. I've been trying to get them to join the Keystone Paranormal Society for two years now, and they both just laugh it off. Um, Everyone listening should join the Keystone Paranormal Society on Facebook real quick. Like, share, subscribe to all our social media channels. You know the drill. So these guys are very skeptical of these things. And we've all heard these Keystone ghost stories. But they were up in Harris one night, and they got off the elevator, and they start walking down the hallway on the top floor. And they stop because they had to lock one of the classrooms. There was a room where there used to be, like, a printer and, like, stacks of free shirts and stuff like that on the floor. Like, I don't know what the room is supposed to be, but it was unlocked every night, and we had to lock it. So they go in there, and they're standing still, like, fumbling for the keys. And they both just hear somebody walking down the hallway toward them. So they stop and look at each other in shock. And neither of them said anything, because, as I mentioned, they're both very skeptical. They're not interested in any of this stuff. They look at each other real quick, and one of them just says, Hello? And there's nothing. So they start walking down the hallway and they hear somebody walking after them. So they both kind of uh, ran out and were pretty freaked out when I talked to them about it. So, of course, you get to my story of Harris Hall. (coughs) Nothing too dramatic, but definitely 
creeped me out. After I was no longer with the campus safety department, I would occasionally go up there when I knew my friends were working and visit them. You know, catch up, maybe go for a little tour of campus, talk about the old days, all that good stuff. So I went up there one time in the summer when Jordan was working by himself, and we were reliving all the old days, you know, talking about that 2016 baseball team, all the, all the nostalgia tour. And we go up to Harris, and we get there, and he's like, well, we got to go up to the top floor. Let's take the elevator. So we're probably 10, 15 feet away from this elevator, and it just opens. Like, it was inviting us or something like that. So I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he started laughing, and I said, let's take the fucking stairs. <laughs> so that's what we did. Another time, I was, well, I was still in the department. I'm not going in chronological order here. I get a call from a person identifying themselves as the Keystone Paranormal Society. Now, this is a previous iteration of the group, because as I'm sure we will discuss in future programs, it's kind of died and been resurrected multiple times. So this is the old KPS. This person calls me and goes, we're doing a ghost investigation on the top floor of Harris, and we need somebody from campus safety to unlock the doors for us. So the three of us are are talking on the radio, like, who's going to do this? You know, like no hesitation. You guys were all just like, yeah, totally. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a student organization in need. OK. And we always put the students first. I see. <laughs> so <laughs> after a little discussion, we decided, OK, well, I'll, I'll go do it. The other guys didn't really want to. They didn't want to go up there. So I go up, and it's like six or eight people, and they're all brandishing their iPhones that are turned to, like, the Apple brand, like, EVP detector, like, the free ghost detector app where you have to pay $1.99 to communicate with the spirits, like, all of that stuff. And they're talking to me about, you know, like, is this building haunted? It's like... Yes, it's very haunted. Like, isn't that why you guys are here? Um, and we're talking about it. They're telling me that they had gone to a cemetery a few days earlier, a few weeks earlier, or whatever, and they had shocking photographs of anomalies or something like that. So the one person was going through their phone and, like, showing me this footage they had captured or whatever, and it was a picture. It was very weird, but... It looked just like a pink, like, blob of something on the, the picture. Like, I would have thought it was like a cotton ball if I didn't know it was supposed to be a ghost. But um, we were talking about it, and they were saying, like, oh, they should have brought the Ouija board. They're going to bring it up here next time, and, and they're going to do that to get a response. And I just told them, like, you want to be really careful on this campus of, like, how much you want to poke at these things. Like, if you upset them or you offend them or you make them mad or anything, is that really worth getting a blurry picture to put on your YouTube channel? Yeah, so I know we discussed this before. A lot of what you post on KPS is not really embellishing stories, but just telling them for what they truly are. So for anyone listening, the stories may not seem like they have this big, astonishing ending, but it's just the truth. It's just what's really going on. The kids at night that he's describing were really looking for something, anything, to make it interesting. But that's not the truth about what happens in these paranormal investigations. If it's something, if something happens, it happens. You can't force it. That's exactly right. So I would say a solid 99.8% of the time, you go to a haunted location late at night. You take your equipment. You know, I'm not big on ghost equipment. We could talk about that another time. That's a longer story. You take your equipment, you take your psychic media, you take your whoever, you bring your pendulums, your crystals, all this stuff, and nothing happens. 
the vast majority of the time, nothing happens. Would you say that it more or less happens when you're least expecting it, when you don't want it to happen? I think it very much depends on what kind of entity that you're dealing with. So dealing with the ones in Harris Hall, do you feel a negative energy or good? It's tough to say. Or is it just like nothing, like you're just experiencing what's happening? It's really tough to say because there's more than one energy in any of these buildings on campus. Some are decidedly more evil than others. Which we will get to in another podcast. Keep tuning in. Um, the Art Center episode is one where stuff actually does happen, and that's kind of what makes it shocking. Um, anyway... As far as the Harris one, like, if you believe the stories, if you are a professor or anyone who who takes your own life because you're bullied, and then a hundred years later, someone comes into the place where you died, and they're asking you questions and poking at you and basically egging you on, how are you going to feel about that? Yeah, I mean, if I were that spirit, I'd probably do nothing just to prove them wrong and make them feel stupid. Yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much what happened that night. Because they're, like, asking questions and stuff. Like I said, the $1.99 ghost detection app is, is one of my favorites. My fiancé actually downloaded it one time. <coughs> and we went ghost hunting on campus. So here you go. We're walking around. And all of a sudden, we were approached by an entity. And it told us in the app that it wants to communicate. And, like, Viking runes come up on the screen. And I actually know how to read Viking runes. They're just random letters. It doesn't actually say anything. But at the bottom of the screen, it says, Pay one ninety nine now to read the spirit's message. That's so haunting. Yeah. <laughs> so, those kinds of things are um, part and parcel, I guess. What I would say, as far as the... The reality of paranormal investigating and the reality of shows and, and podcasts and things like that that you see, there's kind of like three things that every paranormal group does. You have entertainment, you have exploration, and you have education. The entertainment aspect is when you watch Ghost Adventures on TV. It's guys that have degrees in acting, that have degrees in production, that are making an entertaining story around the topic of paranormal stuff. And there's special effects of like creepy dolls and shit that appear on screen and every other word is something getting blurted out by the censors. Like, it's entertaining. That's what it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to watch it and think, okay, I believe now. You're supposed to subscribe to Discovery Plus. That's the point of it. And you have exploration groups. People like to go to abandoned buildings, whether they're haunted or not. There's several in the greater Scranton area here that are kind of like well known. Yeah, I've been to most of them. What's the one like the West Mountain Sanitarium or something yeah, like that? I actually try to get up there, but it's a hike. One of the most popular ones is the Lace Factory. They just tore that down and also Penn Hills and the Poconos, which is mostly burned down and is heavily surveillanced by state troopers now. They were a lot less popular before the pandemic, but as everybody had nothing to do, they all decided to go up and destroy abandoned buildings for fun and ruin it for everybody. Yeah. I had a lot of photographer friends who used to go to the Lace Factory. I remember we talk about that when I was in school. Yeah. yeah, the Lace Factory is my favorite. It was one of the first ones that I went to. To this day, out of the 10 or 15 that I've been to, it's still my favorite. There's still lace in some of the machines. It really was beautiful. It was definitely something to see when it was there with the clock tower and the bowling alley and everything. I had another friend who warned me and swore on everything that was sacred to her not to go to the sanitarium. Yeah, that one I've never been to. I did hear it was really haunted, though. She told me that that's a very, very bad place to go in terms of bad energy and demonic infestations, things like that. Yeah, I would love to go there. It's just tough to get to. And we are absolutely not endorsing breaking into abandoned buildings. But if you do, don't get caught. So lots of people like to go to different locations and things like that. Um, one of the feature episodes will be about the time that I went to the abandoned Calvert building with two of my members who are photographers, because what had happened was the place was condemned. It was deemed unfit for human habitation, which it probably should have been many years earlier. And the owner was friends with 
my friend's dad, who was a police detective and is now a paranormal investigator. So he calls my friend's dad and says, hey, Mark, like, they're going to tear this building down in a couple weeks. Do you think your daughter and maybe like a couple of her friends would want to come up here and take pictures someday? So it turned into an afternoon of chills and spills, I guess. Um, it's a pretty scary experience. That's a longer, that's another episode. So you get groups that like to go to places like that. I know just for Halloween, there are various events on campus happening of people going up to the cemetery on campus because that's like a popular, um, scary destination, personally. And I don't know how many of my members out there share my opinion on this. I know that the three, like, that are closest to me, the three, like, founding members, whatever, share my opinion on this. You have to be extremely careful if you're going to go looking for any kind of paranormal activity. If you're going to just go in an abandoned building... Once you get past the asbestos, once you get past the black mold, once you get past, you know, hobos or whatever else might be in there, if it is actually a haunted location, to just stumble in there and think, oh, like, we're going to make fun of this and have fun and maybe shoot a little TikTok or two in here, that could be very dangerous. And the reason that I think so many people do go into those places is that they don't actually believe in ghosts or anything like that and that anything is going to happen. Because as someone who believes very strongly in spirits or a life after death or anything like that, I would not go looking for those things. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, the mission of the KPS was never, and as long as I'm in charge, it never will be, to prove that the paranormal is real. That is not one of our interests, simply because where we are as a, as a culture or whatever, I could literally catch a ghost in a jar and bring it to people, and if they're a skeptic, they would still sell, tell me, no, it's not real, it's fake. And even more than that, once you see this stuff and experience it, you don't need to convince anybody. So what I like to focus on is more education-based. Maybe that's predictable because I am a teacher. Um, <laughs> but I like to be more informative-based, talking about various phenomena and maybe maybe what causes them. It's tough to say what causes them, but we, we have theories, we can talk about them. And that's kind of the main goal that I had uh, about doing this podcast. So when I was asked to do it, I saw it as a good opportunity to just get some stuff out there, you know. I guess one other thing I want to say about that is there's no such thing as a paranormal expert. There is no such thing as a Bigfoot expert, a UFO expert. We have zero idea of what any of this stuff even is. How can one be an expert on it? Okay. I have plenty of theories that I'm sure I'll talk about, but is it necessarily true? I don't know, and I never will. So something that's kind of interesting about the dynamic in this podcast is that I don't believe as strongly as Steve does, so this is going to be an interesting journey for me as I discover my own beliefs and am influenced by his experiences. And I think that's something that's a very good opportunity because when you sit in a room full of people that all believe in this stuff, we take so much for granted so much goes unexplained or unexplored. Like if I just say like, you know, there's a demonic presence in, in the art center. If I'm in a group of 10 people that have the same beliefs as me, that's all we need to say. What does it actually mean? How do we actually explain that to people that aren't familiar with it? Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to rationalize sometimes to make sure you aren't embellishing stories. Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Because... There are plenty of, of other Keystone stories out there that I know are just made up that somebody, like, I've put out posts on Facebook. I've asked people in classes for ghost stories so many times. And the ones that I trust are the ones that will come up to me after class when everybody has left. And they'll say, hey, 
something really scary happened. I want to talk to you about it. Versus the people that are like, yeah, so last night, like, we were in the room and all of a sudden the, the cross I have on the wall went flying. And then something grabbed my blanket and pulled me off and I felt it touch my leg. So I swatted it away and then it grabbed my ass. That being said, we do want your stories if they're real. Yeah. So go ahead and send those to the KPS Facebook page after you follow the page and like all of the posts. Send your story in, and if we believe it, we will read it here. Well, I'll just put this out there to those listening at home. If you want to make up something dramatic, we'd be happy to have you on. So then we could talk about how to distinguish a good and bad paranormal witness. Yeah, absolutely. You're always welcome to be the example on one of these. You got anything else for us, Steve? Related to Harris? Probably not. Um, the, I guess the lore of why that building is haunted in the first place is worth mentioning. If you're from Pennsylvania, every old building is built on an Indian burial ground. Okay? This is the oldest one in the book. You have all heard this. However, there's a lot of a lot of stories of something like this happening. Something like when this area was settled, the native people were driven away, whatever, and their sacred places became our sacred places. So kind of stuff like, we tear down an Indian burial ground, we build a church over it. Something like this. This happens all the time. So if you look into the history of this area, you know, with many of those tribes, with many of those cultures, a high point, like a top of a hill or something like that, overlooking a river, is seen as being a place of contact between the, the world of the living and the world of the dead. So it would make sense. Harris is on a hill. Yes, it is to the highest point on campus. And I've been on the roof of Harris twice, and when you're standing up there, like, you, if it wasn't forest, you could see for miles. Like, you could see a very long way. As far as, well, I mean, that's it for Harris. I think that's good for one episode. I think that's enough of that one. Yeah. As for, like, other stories. We'll get into those next time. This has been the premiere episode of KPS Stories. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a very scary night. Catch you next time. <laughs>